Hey, hey, it's TDA and this is a quick tutorial on how to use proliferators. It's a new item. People seem to be quite confused about how exactly they work. And to be honest, it is quite confusing. So I am going to show you briefly on how to use the proliferators, how they work, where to best apply them and some common pitfalls in the use of these proliferators because it's not as simple as just putting them on the belt and they will work by themselves, or at least not necessarily. So let's jump into that. Okay, so let's just use a very basic setup in order to demonstrate how it works. I've got over here a pretty typical Mark III belt with 30 smelters for iron attached to that. That's the maximum amount that you can have on one belt in order to draw the maximum amount of iron from it or iron ore from it and it will get you exactly one full belt of iron ore out of it. Of course you can scale this up but the principle remains the same. This is a typical smelting build. Now what happens if we put a proliferator on it? So you need to connect it, you put it on the belt before um, the smelting so the inputs get the proliferator you have to get your proliferator units from somewhere. I'm using the Mark III as a base example. You put them in on the higher part of the building and now these things will get smelted. So as you can see, there is no arrows on this side of the inputs and everything coming out of the sprayer is now buffed with the proliferator stack. Now, what does this do in this smelting build? Well, it will do exactly nothing like this. Why? Because the belt incoming is already maximized to the max and the outgoing belt cannot carry more than 30 um, iron on it as you can see the belt is actually starting to stack up so like i said if you don't make sure you know what you're doing this is actually not going to help you at all even though you have the buff applied and it's working perfectly now there's two different modes on these smelters and i will um, and the way you handle them will be different by default it is set to produce extra products what does this mean well with the 25% buff, for every 4 iron that this smelter would usually produce, it will now produce um, 5, 25% more. So that means that rather than getting 30 per second on this belt, I will now get 25% more. So I will get around 37.5, let's say 38 iron on my belt. And this belt can only carry 30 per second and of course this is not an issue on the sides over here so if you just connect the sides to the ILS that problem is fixed but if you have any build that uses the maximum amount you can put on the belt and you probably have you will get into a belt issue now there's a second building that was added to the game to avoid exactly that and that is the piler and it will pile up your items uh, it should probably have been called the stacker or something like that because it actually tells you how to stack your items and that's the word that's being used elsewhere in the game but anyway stacking up your items on the belt will solve that so i will put them in and let's see how that works okay same build but now we added in two of these auto stackers um, as you can see we still have the proliferator doing its work but now the belt is no longer stacking up. You can see that, tell that by the fact that all these smelters are now working at optimal speed. So the stackers make sure that the belt, whatever comes in, all the items are stacked two by two. And that means that rather than having 30 per second on this belt, I can have 60 per second on this belt. And um, yeah, that will allow me to make sure that the additional capacity that we're getting because we are now producing 25% more items, so the 38 that I mentioned before, can now actually be carried on the belt. So if you do it like this, you may, are making full use of the proliferator in this specific little tiny build. Uh, and you basically increased your production from 30 per second to 38, 37.5 per second only by adding in the uh, proliferators over here um, and you actually don't need any more incoming materials than you used to use before so you're still using 30 iron ore per second but you're getting 37.5 iron in return for that that is based on of course this specific build now you can do it differently you can also say hey 25 percent that is not enough I want to increase my production speed by 100% that will effectively double your production but let's see what happens if we do that okay so I just flipped the switch on all these smelters they are now all producing at plus 100 speed because of the proliferator but Houston we have a problem because this belt is no longer able to support all the smelters specifically you 
see that we only get half the smelters working. Which makes sense, because what did we do? We increased the production speed of all the smelters by 100%. So they're pro now producing in total, or they could be producing 60 iron per second rather than 30. Um, that's not a problem for our belt, thanks to the pilers over here. Because we remember, we can now support 60 iron per second on this belt over here. But we have a problem, because even though we're trying to produce 60 iron per second, we only have 30 iron per or per second coming in on this belt so once again if you just flip the switch and apply the proliferator it won't do anything how can we solve that well we solve that in the same way as we did that over here we add in a piler on this side so be right back while i do that okay and now we solve that problem so now we have two incoming builds with ore which are being stacked up by the auto pilers and that means we effectively have 60 ore per second on this belt now we are spraying that belt once it comes together and it goes into the smelters. And as you can see, these smelters are now working at optimal speed. We are stacking up the end result. So we effectively have 30 iron per second on each belt on the sides now. And they are going into this ILS. And the fact that these two are not working has to do with the fact that I just set this up. So it's still trying to recover from the initial shock of having too much on the belts. Um, Remember what, two things, if you put on these pilers on your belts, make sure you face them in the correct way, like I mentioned before. And you also want to put the proliferator on the belt after you pile them up. Why? Because the spraying actually works on the entire stack rather than on the individual items. So this effectively saves you half the amount of spraying material, proliferators, that you would have to use if you would put the spray before the stacking a um, few more things to mention though because of course now we are producing at optimal speed we effectively set up a facility that is now producing at twice the speed as you can see all the smelters are working now again um, same facility with a few small additions effectively twice the throughput so very 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 awesome it will be consuming a lot more energy so because of the proliferators don't forget that this is now using 150 percent energy so you double the production but you are using twice uh, two and a half times as much power not the biggest problem in the world i think especially not considering this is mostly an in-game thing to do but it's something to be aware of so in short if you are using the production speed up make sure you supply your buildings with enough materials to actually use the speed and make sure that your belts are actually able to support the speed that you are producing at if you're using the extra products same thing applies but mostly on the outgoing belts because of course the incoming belts will not be affected so like i did now you don't have to build that thing in the front but there is one more thing to actually two more things that you need to be aware of so first of all Whatever you do with proliferators, make sure that if you're using proliferators, you use it on all the incoming materials. Otherwise, it simply won't work. So that is something to take into account. Uh, by the way, you can actually see the additional products being produced in this second circle in the production tab, by the way. So just a fun little thing. But anyway, make sure you use the spraying on all the incoming products i mean this is very simple i only have one incoming product but if you want to use it for example when you're producing a building it will need to be on all the different items let me show you an example real quick and what better way to demonstrate how proliferators work than with a build that builds proliferators and you can actually use the proliferators to proliferate the proliferators that was a fun thing to say anyway um so how that works is you have to make sure you buff the incoming items on, of course, the preliminary belts. So the way that works is that you can actually chain these proliferators on the high belt. So you have one incoming. If you put them all next to each other, you can have the belt go through one of the proliferators into the next one and then onwards into the next one. So that's really efficient and avoids a lot of spaghetti if you are able to do that uh, on some parts of your builds. Now, of course, the outcoming items from the first part of the production also need to be buffed once again, because otherwise only one of the two items will be buffed. So I needed to put in a spray coater in between. And similarly, I need to do that in the second step of the production tab as well. So if you do it like this, that will make sure that all three parts of the production are being buffed. Remember, you have to consider your ratios, because if you just buff, for example, the first build over here, 
proliferators are built in a one-to-one -one ratio, so one assembler making proliferators will be enough to exactly feed into one other. You can double the speed of this one, but if this one doesn't is, is not getting buffed e itself, you won't actually be able to use that production, um, and you're basically doing it for nothing. So you do need to make sure you're buffing all three with 100% speed, like I'm doing now, and by doing that, the end result will be that this build is now producing twice as much proliferators and the interesting thing is here that this proliferator is basically buffing itself and of course that's super efficient because you can use 100 sprays just from one proliferator at mark 3 so definitely worth doing it um, but as you can see the build becomes a lot more complex than the default build will be which is basically just three assemblers and three belts that is how it works now if you are going to buff your production, it's the last thing I want to mention, but it's really important. If you are going to buff your production with production speed, you should probably make sure that you build your build to ratio, then put in the proliferators in each section of your build. And then, like I'm doing now, basically make sure that each part of your build is speed up by the proliferators in an equal way. That is quite cumbersome to do in some builds, especially if you have larger builds. If you're playing with a more modular build where you're just making one item per section basically then it's quite straightforward to do and really efficient to buff up your production like that so that, that's a way to go um, if you're using a more uh, raw materials to end product type of build like I'm doing in my perfect ratio run for example then you might not want to do this like this you could still do it but it becomes a really messy really fast what you could alternatively do and still get a lot of benefits out of proliferators is you simply put in one proliferator at the end near your end product and use the setting where you are using the extra products so not this one but this one that effectively means that by placing one proliferator at the end of your build or maybe several proliferators if your end end product has more than one input but you only need to place them at one place in your build and you will effectively boosting your entire production by 25% with only placing a few proliferators and only increasing the production or the energy cost of the last part of your production. So that is a huge buff and very easy to do even in very large builds because you just do it at the end. Think for example about white science. If you put simply put the proliferators in the last science facility, or just before the last science facility, that combines the five different researchers into white science, and you make sure all of those researchers are being buffed by a proliferator, you're effectively not producing, for example, four white science per second, but you're now producing five white science per second, and the only thing you did was adding in a few proliferators near the end of your production chain. So if you're gonna use proliferators, at all that is where i think you should start the end of your production change uh, chain um, but if you really want to boost your produ production massively you can do it from the start to the end and of course you can also use the extra products at each step of your production uh, rather than in between and rather than doing it like this like i'm doing now that will save you a huge amount of resources although resources are typically not the thing that you're low on in the most parts of the game but that's also something you could consider for example, with oil or um, other items that you might be low on on certain parts of the game. If you use the additional production, uh, that's a nice way to just produce the amount of resources you have on hands without really having a lot of effort to go through. All right, that's enough about proliferates. I hope this makes it a little bit more clear on how to use them, where to most effectively use them. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want me um, to show you in some of builds how I use them. And I hope to see you in the next video.